A2 variable acceleration. Now, it's basically the same as year 12, but they just give you trig functions, innit? So let's just remind ourselves and go through a pretty difficult question, uh, one that I could find, innit? So I've adapted it slightly uh, to make it more interesting for us. So a particle P moves along a straight line. The velocity after T seconds is VP is T sine pi over 4T, where T is between 0 and 8. Write down the first value of T at which P changes direction. Okay, so how do we calculate where, when an object changes direction if we think about this straight line? Imagine the particle starts here. And let's just say it is moving to the right. For it to change direction, it would have to be pointing back towards the left. Now, what must have happened in that time? It's moving forward, moving backwards. What happened? We moved, we stopped, we came back. So, the change of direction happens when the velocity eventually becomes zero. Okay? Now, obviously, it's starting here, so it might start at rest here. But we don't take that one into account where v is zero because it's already just moving in one direction from that start of the motion. So we're looking for that first value where t is not zero. Okay, so something zero here, we get zero is t sine pi over 4t. Now there you get that t is zero which we're not interested in. So I'm going to cross that off. Then I'm going to get inverse sine of zero. Now, inverse sine of zero is just zero, which again, we are not interested in. So we need the other values. How do we get the other values of sine? To get the secondary value, we do pi minus. Pi minus zero is just pi. Then we keep adding two pi to get the other value. So we'd get zero, we would get two pi, three pi, etc. But we want the first value when it changes direction, that's not zero. So it's gonna be this one. So that's what t is four, times that by four and divide by pi. So t is four. Right. Find the total distance traveled for t being between zero and eight. So for this, okay? I didn't specify. Find the total distance traveled by p for t being between zero and eight. Now, when we do this stuff in year 12, what do we always reiterate when it comes to the distance traveled. Well, in year 12, we mostly focus on quadratics, right, which might look like this. Say there's some point A. If I want to find the total distance traveled between 0 and A, we're finding the area under the graph. But what do we need to be careful of? Negative side. That will start subtracting from the positive areas. So we need to do this section separately and then take them away. Okay, we do the positive, take away the negative. Because that's negative, the double negative becomes positive. Okay, so we need to figure out which parts of this graph are actually negative so we can just make it positive. And for that, I always recommend a sketch. And at A levels, we'll always have a graph which we can easily sketch. Let me show you guys how we can sketch. V is T sine pi over 4. Okay. Now, forget about the t for a second. Let's sketch sine of pi over 4t. Now, if I was to sketch that, the first thing I'll tell you guys is to modify the range. Okay. So right now, t is between 8 and 0 because we know the coefficient divides all the x values by that coefficient. So if it was sine of 2t, you're dividing all the x values by 2. So in this case, we're dividing all the x values by pi over 4. But in a previous video when I did uh, just introduction to radians, I always said, always modify the range, sketch the sine graph within that modified range, and then we will divide all of that by pi over 4. Okay, we'll unmodify that range. So, we need to make all of these look like pi over 4. So we're going to times through by pi over 4. And then here, you're just going to get 2 pi. Okay, so we're going to draw the sine graph between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, we have pi. Now, we're going to unmodify that range by 
now dividing by pi over 4. That's what we said that's going to do, right? So if we divide all these numbers by pi over 4, what do we get? Dividing this by pi over 4, we're just going to get the number 4. And dividing this by pi over 4, we're going to get 8. And there you go. That's why they said, you know, between 0 and 8. Okay? So that's what sine of pi over 4 t looks like. But what happens to the graph when we have t? Well, think about it. Well, obviously, we're going to think about it. This is the t-axis, right? So one thing's for sure is t is positive. So we're taking this sine graph and multiplying it by a positive number. Now, what's interesting here is as t increases, you're increasing the value in which you're multiplying sine by. Okay? So if I was to give you guys a, an example, so this is 2, right? And this would be 1. So if I was to sub in 2, I would get 2 sine pi over 4 times 2. Okay? Now, remember that's 1, so this is just 2. But if I did this one at 1, you're multiplying it by a smaller value, 1 sine pi over 4 times 1, which is root 2 over 2. Okay, so you're multiplying by a smaller value. So as you go up, yeah, the t value you multiply is going to increase. So here, if we do the symmetry, we have 3. 3 sine of pi over 4 times 3 is going to give you 3 lots of root 2 over 2. So these two values are actually the same. But because the t value is larger, we're going to be increasing what we are multiplying by. Okay. Now, all that does is just going to stretch the graph increasingly as we move along, okay? Because we're increasing that coefficient of t. So you're, you're not stretching it by a constant. Usually when we just have a fixed 2 there, we just stretch, stretch the whole thing by 2. But because the t value is increasing, the sine graph is going to continue getting further and further away from the x-axis as we go along. So what is that going to look like? Now, it's not that deep in terms of what we're about to do. But I think it's helpful for you guys to see what's going on. So I'll, I'll have the graph here, and then we'll do the working above. So I have my intersections with the axes, which do not change. Now, what I'm going to do is as I do my sine graph, I'm going to make it longer and longer and longer. So I'm going to try and... Something like that. Yeah, you can kind of see that one's smaller than that, uh, smaller than that one. So yeah, something like that, isn't it? Uh, anyway, we can see that the area between 4 and 8 is the negative one. So we're going to integrate between 0 and 4 separately to 4 and 8. I think the best way to do this is to integrate this first, and then we'll do the limits. So I didn't specify, I made this question up, but I want the exact value. So we're not just going to rely on the calculator here. So we need to integrate this, dt. How do we integrate this? Liddy, integration by parts, isn't it? So we leave the first term, integrate the second. Now for sine, I'm thinking, well, okay, what differentiates the sine is cosine, right? So cos of pi over 4t, differentiate that. You differentiate the angle first, is pi over 4. Cos goes to minus sine pi over 4t. But we wanted to integrate sine of pi over 4t, so we have to times by 4 and divide by minus pi. So that's like times in by minus 4 over pi. Okay, so we should be pretty good at integration by now. If not, flick back to my videos on integration. So we have minus 4 over pi cos pi over 4t. So leave, integrate, minus the integral differentiate, which is 1, and then integrate, which is always the same as this one, dt. That minus pi over 4t can come out to become plus 4 over pi, uh, 4 over pi, not pi over 4. So we need to integrate cos of pi over 4t. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make that guess of sine of pi over 4t. But that differentiates to pi over 4 cos of pi over 4t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by just 4 over pi this time because I just want to integrate 
cos of pi over 4. So this is 4 over pi sine pi over 4 t. Okay. So overall, what have we got? Uh, okay, you guys know that we're doing 4 and 8 separately. All right, 4 and 8 separately. We have minus 4t over pi. cos pi over 4t, then 4 over pi times that integral, which was, so we have this, 4 over pi times 4 over pi is 16 over pi squared, sine pi over 4. Okay? Now, that's my integral, and I need to do it between 0 and 4, 4 and 8 separately. Okay? So we do need to show our work in for these. Now hopefully these give us some nice numbers. Uh, I was debating do I... Uh, I'm going to be cheeky here and write 4 and 8 like this. Because we can just look at that one. Right. Let's do it, Mike. Okay, have faith in yourself. If you were to do this in the calculator, then I recommend you just type in these bits first. And also this should have T. And then hopefully things become zero. We'll see. So when you sub in four here, I'm going to try and do it without my calculator. Uh, famous last words. Four over four is one. So we have cos of pi. Cos of pi is minus one. Minus one times that. That'll become plus 4t over pi. So it's positive 4t over pi. With four, we get 16 over pi. Here, luckily, when I sub in 4, I get sine of pi, which is just 0. Then when I sub in 0, because that's got t, that's going to be 0. And subbing in 0 here, we just get 0. So we just get 16 over pi. Sweet as a nut, mate. So, let's sub in 8. Uh, cos of 8, uh, that's 1. Because a over 4 is 2. Cos of 2 pi is 1. Yeah. So we're just left with this, but then we need to sub in 8. Subbing in 8 doesn't mean minus 32 over pi. Here, subbing in, um, subbing in, what was I subbing in? 8. You get sine of 2 pi, which is just 0 anyway. Cool, so you get minus. Now we need to sub in 4. And I already know when I, what I get when I sub in 4. When I sub in 4, I get 16 over pi. Which gives me minus 48 over pi. And there you go. That was the negative side. And you can see it's a bigger area than this one, right? Because it was going further down. So my total distance traveled, we'll call it capital D, is going to be this minus this. Or you add them together. Which is 64 over pi meters. Nice. So that's a cheeky six marks. Maybe worth more. I made it up. I thought it's worthy of a six mark question. Then it says, a second particle Q moves along a straight line where the velocity of that is 5x plus 1. After k seconds, the distance traveled by Q is equal to P find k. Now this k, I want it to 2dp uh, because of this value and this being linear. It's not going to give us an exact answer. I mean, you could work it out, but it's going to look horrible. A solution that is not even worth uh, exploring. Now, there's different ways you guys can look at this. I still recommend you do a sketch. And then we can see from there. Let me do the sketch here. So, 5x plus 1 crosses here at 1, has gradient 5. And that's between 0 and 8. I want to know at what point k would this area be 64 of a pi? Whoops, 64 of a pi, I butchered that. Now obviously you guys can integrate the graph between 0 and k, or I think it's actually nice to just think about the trapezium. So half h, h is just k, half h, a, which is just 1, plus b. How do we get this, this b term? 
yeah, the parallel sides. All you do is you take your k, you just need to know the y value, you sub into here, 5k plus 1. So you're saying a half h, a half h, a plus a plus b, 5k plus 1. Equals 64 of a pi. Okay. And now we just need to solve that. So I'll double both sides and multiply in the k. So here this is what? 5k plus 2. So we get 5k squared plus uh, 2k is multiplying through by 2. We get, what is it? 1, 2, 8 over pi. Then we just subtract the 1, 2 over pi. We could times by pi. 5 pi k squared plus 2 pi k minus 128 is 0. Now in the exam, you guys need to show the quadratic formula, but obviously in your calculator, you don't type it in as the quadratic formula. You type it in as polynomial solver which my calculator is there, which is good stuff. So k is going to be negative b plus or minus root uh, b squared minus 4 a su all over 2a. Now k obviously has to be positive based on the question. k is between 0 and 8, right? So we're going to say k is approximately we have got uh, 5 pi, 2 pi, a minus a 1, a 2, a 8. About 2.66. Because the other value is negative 3.06, which is obviously not a value for us. And that's it. That's a beautiful question, if I must say so myself. Guys, if you learned something today, I really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content, and if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, more details are in the description. And feel free to join the Lung Gang Reddit if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community, innit? I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice one, white.